hurricane secondary eyewalls. What are they? How do we see them? A hurricane secondary eyewall really is just another eyewall, where the eyewall is the innermost ring of the vegetables around the eye. Now, what these things usually do is that eventually these secondary eyewalls become the primary eyewalls. And the way we usually model these things is the microwave satellite imagery. Now, I will warn you that I'm going to be leaning on some prior videos that I've done, including hurricane sensitization, how to read satellite imagery, and on hurricane fluidum eyewalls. So I do recommend you do watch those uh, before we start jumping into this. Now, what we're looking at here are microwave satellite imagery of hurricane Matthew in 2016, and they're arranged in time. And the brighter yellow and red are brighter uh, reflectance temperatures, and they basically tell you how much convection or deconvection is going on. And as we come through time, you'll see right here, Matthew is actually a very small eyewall. So as we go forward in time, you'll see that Matthew's source is actually a very, very small eyewall. But as we go forward in time, you'll see this outer band starts to be purple in the inner eyewall. And as we get here in April 9th, 22.4 degrees, you'll see that this outer ring is completely engulfed in the inner one. The inner one is actually starting to get the color to a Now, if you move forward in time, particularly here at 944 D on April 11th, you can see very clearly you have this very large circle of convection with a, with a, uh, what is called the remnant inner eyeball. And this is what happens with the, the actual gas form of technical energy called the remote. But this is what happens is that you actually have to start with a inner eyeball, and eventually, as it gets to the bottom row, this outer eyeball contracts, the inner eyeball disintegrates, and now you have a new primary eyeball with the current. So, this is what we're going to be talking about today. So, you don't actually need microwave settling, it helps a lot, but you can actually pull this out from geostationary satellite imagery. And right here is a satellite link of Hurricane Ian. Now, it's about to cross Cuba here, and you're going to start seeing Ian uh, develop an eye right here. So, eventually, the little eye is going to appear right there. Now, it's going to cross Cuba, and it looks really ragged and it's associated with terrain. Now, you actually have a very distinct eye wall here. I'm oh, sorry, eye and eye wall. Now, it's going to erode. This is actually going to completely dissipate and basically goes away, getting intense convection. And as right before this landfall, you actually get this massive eye associated with Hurricane Union. We are actually underwent an eye wall replacement cycle just before we made landfall. And just freeze right here, right before Hurricane Ian makes landfall, you'll notice that the eye is mostly clear and it's much, much larger than what it looked like right before it made landfall in Cuba and after it came off the Cuban coast. Now, it actually went through an eye wall replacement cycle. And you can ask, well, how do we know that? It's just a mix of convection in English. Well, we haven't had a special ingredient because it's just so close to land. We can actually absorb this in WSREAD radar data. We didn't see what the ground radar saw that made this go special. So one of the really neat things about Hurricane Ian is that we actually have ground-based radar information, radar data, from Hurricane Ian that's traversing between Cuba and Florida. So that's what we're looking at here. So the radar is actually based in Key West, that's right here. And uh, what this is showing is in the red and the oranges and the white and the one color, that little wind away from the radar, while in the greens and the greens, those are these four to there. So you can sort of abstract away the iconic circulation of uh, Ian at this time. Now, what I want you to pay attention to here is that right in here, that is your inner eyewall. And you'll see, you know, just keep going and connect this, that is your outer eyewall of Hurricane Ian. So, what, what, what we actually captured here was in the middle of an eyewall replacement cycle. If you continue this animation, you can actually watch the inner eyewall of Ian disappear. So, you're still see some little remnants on the inside. That's the scattered associated with the eyewall decaying. But eventually, that's going to clear out, and you're going to get a much, much bigger eye. And this is what happens during eye wall replacement cycle. Now, the eagle eye view will notice that this is a bit of a polygon. You actually know it. If you want to know why that happens, I do strongly recommend you watch the full eye eyewall once they try to do the video. That's the opposite of this one. But basically, the point here is that this is a secondary eyewall formation. You've got your much larger wind mass one. It comes in, it erodes the inner one, the inner one disappears, and that's how you get an eye. And that's an eye wall replacement cycle. So there is 
there's actually a lot of research that's been done in the secondary eyewalls, and it's wondering why that has happened. The answer is we don't really have a good reason for why they occur. Now, it's, it's, it's not so much that we don't know is that the pathways to get the secondary eyewalls are there, there are multiple, and then each one happens for a different reason. I want to be very clear about secondary eyewalls. The class of these things is actually very different in major hurricanes. We're talking about categories three, four, five. Secondary eyewalls are actually very, very common. So don't think these are very important to me, but they happen usually all the time. Secondary eyewalls, as I said, have been studied extensively. We can see them in multiple different frameworks. You can see them in model studies. You can see them in observations. Don't pay attention to the X and Y axis, which is normalizing by the size of the region. So that's the same thing we're doing in hurricane analysis. What we have, this is from the El Dora data. This is the, the kind of area you see. We have New York City. We'll have a research area in the inside. And we'll put the gas pipes in the middle of the city. Secondary eyewall. You can also get these in the numerical model simulations. So this is the weather research and forecasting model. Here is an inner eyewall, a moat, outer eyewall. Same thing here. You can get an inner eyewall, a moat, and an outer eyewall that's starting to form. There's a lot of research that goes into secondary eyewall formation. And it's because, like I said, it's not entirely known why they form. So she said, there are a lot of reasons why they form. And figuring out which reason, including two, is proven to be a little challenge. Now, you don't actually need radar data all the time. You don't have to start with computers on the satellite imagery. So, what we're looking at here is Hurricane Linda from 1997 in the eastern Pacific. And we do it very closely in the eye. This means if you have your eye, you have your remote. So, that means you have an inner eye. So you don't need microwave imagery, you don't need to create our data. Sometimes you get lucky and it'll just show up in visible satellite imagery. I just want to show you what sometimes we can forecast for you, and I, I understand this is a very, very busy plot, but basically what you got all the way down on the video, this is an imagery from NCSAT, uh, which is in the Western Pacific, is what we were most specific. You have the visible satellite imagery, the microwave imagery, and then they do a difference of the brightness temperature. And this is, this is just how we figure out that these things are happening. And these are your radial variations of these convection. So it's basically showing that you start here, you have a peak where most of the convection is happening, most of the upward motion is, and then a secondary peak that's slowly migrates inward. And you can really see it right here, so that you have the peak in the eyewall, and a secondary peak that's slowly moving inward. And you can see this in visible imagery. Down here, you have your inner eyewall, you have the mode, you have your outer eyewall. And by the time that you start seeing in the microwave imagery, there's a small eye, and you see this much larger eye. The secondary eyewall comes in, essentially eats the inner eyewall, and you get a brand new eyewall. Okay, I've been kind of dancing around why secondary eyewalls happen. We're gonna we're gonna talk about just a couple things that happen, why it's why it's important, why it happens. So what we're looking at here is from an azimuth ladder, so you just going around and you're seeing the stuff that's as that's averaging around the circle, a vertical velocity in your shading and your tangential wings in your contours here. So all the way on the left here, this is what you expect from a normal hurricane. So you have your wind maximum right above the edge layer, you have intense vertical velocities in the eyewall. This is what a regular hurricane looks like. But one thing you need to know about here is that you can see this is this second maximum in vertical velocity. Now eventually, this secondary maximum grows and grows. So if you go from this image to that image, our secondary maximum is moving inwards and intensifying, whereas our primary eyewall, you see our maximum vertical velocity, which is closing 40 meters per second, they're actually slowing down. And by the time you get all the way to the end, the inner eyewall has completely and basically vanished, and now the secondary eyewall has taken over. Now, there's a reason for this. Like I said, there are a lot of reasons for it. It could be due to a boundary layer issue, it could be due to a boundary layer convergence. It could be due to a trough that is pulling, pulling up moisture and uh, mass out of the boundary layer. So basically what is going on here is that there's two things happening at the same time. You have surface convergence and surface friction, and you have convection on top of it. So what that does in tandem is that as the air comes to go from the boundary layer, it goes up. Now as it goes up, the moisture is going to condense the whole new thing. The moisture is going to condense, you're going to get 
Follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.